We're back with the latest episode of the Redbird Rundown, our look at Illinois State men's basketball. Hello, I'm Assistant Sports Editor Joe Deacon as your host, and I'm pleased to be joined once again by beat writer Jim Benson. Hello, Jim. Happy New Year, Joseph. How are you doing? Good. Well, last week we took a break from basketball to concentrate on the Illinois State football team as the Redbirds played for the national championship. We'd like to take a quick moment to congratulate Brox back and the Redbirds on an incredible season. And while their quest came up a couple points short, it was an excellent run and certainly raised the standard for this athletic department. You know, I listened to the game on my drive down to Springfield, Missouri. It sounded like a tremendous game. Uh, it's too bad they just couldn't get that final push. Still, quite, an, quite a run oh, and quite yeah. an appearance. And now it's up to Dan Muller's team to pick up where football left off. So since our last basketball show, the Redbirds have gotten five games into the Missouri Valley Conference schedule. ISU started out with losses to Indiana State and at Wichita State, which is understandable. Then... Uh, they rolled past Missouri State and Drake, actually the other way around. But uh, then on Wednesday, they were out in Terre Haute, Indiana, to face the Sycamores once again. The Redbirds stormed back from a 10-point second-half deficit, but ultimately fell by in overtime on a la- late shot. You know, in, in both games, Joe against Indiana State, they just didn't get the crucial defensive stop in the last 10 seconds. And uh, last night, it was twice in the, in the regulation and overtime. Um, but they're really competing hard. I, in that first Indiana State game, Dan Muller really got on them hard be, because they had they weren't competing hard. Um, since then, they've really competed hard. And they're also starting to get a little healthier. To, uh, they have Devon Akun Purcell back. Uh, he missed seven games with this broken hand. Reggie Lynch uh, was really gimpy for about a month there with his bad back. He looks a lot better. So uh, things are starting to fall into place a little bit. It's trending in the right direction. The one thing they need to do is they, they really have severe – foul troubles on uh, last night they had three guys fall out they really need to work on that yeah that was one thing I was going to bring up especially when you get into an overtime situation like last night when you have guys that are out of the it shortens up your rotations and you're you're in a bind exactly and Teddy Hawkins is going to be out for a while with a with a stress reaction in his foot so when you have uh, Mikhail and and Reggie both fall out that really hurts and Devon's really one of their better rebounders too yep so now it's on to the first game in the annual interstate 74 rivalry as Bradley visits Redbird Arena on Saturday afternoon the Braves are off to a 6-12 and overall start and are 1-4 and in the Valley. And they, they haven't won outside of Peoria yet this season. Uh, so Gino Ford and his Braves have their hands full. Yeah, they do. Gino's really on the hot seat. Uh, they need to turn it around quick or he might, this might be his last visit to Redbird Arena. Uh, Bradley has just not been a very good shooting team this year. That's what it kind of boils down to. But, but they've also had some injuries, too. They're starting to get a little healthier. Uh, their point guard, uh, Sutherland, he uh, broke a finger early in the season. Now he's starting to get back into playing shape. And uh, they have another guard who just came back, Warren Jones, uh, probably their best shooter. So so they're getting healthier. Yeah. Then after the Braves game, the Redbirds will hit the road to Des Moines for Tuesday's battle with the Drake team that they beat by 36 points in the first meeting on Doug Collins' court. Uh, like Bradley, the Bulldogs have been struggling all year, and ISU will certainly want to take advantage. Uh, this looks like another opportunity for the Redbirds to, to they need to seize. Yeah, Drake's kind of a funny team. They're a young team, and they either seem to get blown out or they're right in the game until the last two minutes. Uh, they play better at home. So, I mean, this is kind of like almost a trap game. You know, just because you beat them by 36 at your place two weeks ago doesn't mean the same thing's going to happen at, at in Des Moines. Uh for ISU, this is a big game for Reggie Lynch. Uh, Reggie, uh, his parents and a lot of family members last year drove down from Minneapolis to Des Moines. And Reggie had a great game that game, and he just kind of really ate it up. So I expect him to really come out in this game and really want to kind of show the fam, that's what he calls them, the fam, that uh, you know he, he's got everything together. One thing, as you were saying about Drake, is sometimes they can they can be on, and, and they're a good shooting team, and they gave Loyola a good game. It sounds they gave like Loyola a great game, and they also gave Wichita a really good game a couple of weeks ago. They were down four points with two minutes left and had the ball. So, you know, you look at their record, they're something like 3-14 and 14 now. It doesn't look very good, and like you say, I should beat them by 36. But, you know, this, like I said, this is a kind of a trap game. Indeed. Well, as always, Jim will conduct pregame chats before every game here on Panagraph.com, and he'll also be giving on in-game updates throughout uh, every contest via his Twitter feed. Jim, what's that Twitter handle again? Capital P, small g, underscore, capital B-E-N-S-O-N. Then you'll uh, find all his reports from every game and uh, updates on the team in your daily editions of the Panagraph and right here on Panagraph.com. Thanks for watching.